They are making more and more movies about ultra rich Asians. And are you gonna watch them? Welcome everybody to the Hot Pop Boys. David and Andrew here. Crazy Rich Asians 2, the sequel, has just been announced. Yay! Uh, there's a spinoff starring Gemma Chan and Harry Shum Jr. that might also come out. Oh my God! And Bling Empire season two might also come out too. Yeepee! David, those are sarcastic celebrations. No, they were real. No, why are you mad? They were legitimate. Why are you mad about this? David, David, this I, is Asian representation. David, David, know. this is Asian representation. We get more Asian faces out there. More Asian people get employed. More Asian actors are out there. David, this is this is good for the Asian community. Why are you mad? Because how many more movies about bland personality, ultra rich, British colonial wannabe old money Asians are we going to see? I can't take it, man. Everything from reality shows like House of Ho to Bling Empire 1, Bling Empire 2 to Crazy Rich Asians 1, Crazy Rich Asians 2, yeah. and spinoffs. It's about people with $300 million or more trying to act like bland, ultra-rich white people. But, but David, what if, what, what if I don't want to watch shows about middle class or poor Asians? It's not interesting to me. Well, I those are your two options. It's to... At talk about the misery porn or struggle between parents. Okay, those are these movies. Or you got your ultra rich zone. Okay, okay. You know what? And I'm just sick Fair. of it. I'm sick of how it's circulating the same actors. I'm sick of the themes. I'm sick of I'm sick of like this is what we've accepted as a community internally. And I'm also sick that that is why what the external community accepts from us. Yeah. It's not that different than the black or Latino community getting typecast like. Uh, all black movies have to be in the hood yeah. and have to be about like message, you know, John Singleton, which I still like some of those movies, but they were like stuck in one zone for a long time, right? And the Latino movies having everything to do with like narcos or like cartels, immigration, right? Like, I mean, it's kind like, of stereotypical. Yeah, yeah, it's hyper stereotypical, but like the stereotype that they gave Asians, obviously white people, they have all the archetypes in the middle. They get to be Strangers Things. They get to be Game of Thrones. They get to be Harry Potter. They get to be Bridgerton. They get to be, uh, you know, Succession and Billions, or they get to be Sons of Anarchy. Like whites have like the whole spectrum, right? Blacks and Latinos have like the street stuff. And then Asians get shoved as like ultra rich. <laughs> Why don't you meet my mom? <laughs> uh, which, which rich Asians don't even act like. Literally, it's like a concocted version of like 1920s, 1930s British or Dutch colonial Asia thrust into modern times, which is House of Ho, or literally like it's creating a scene that like really barely exists anymore. I'm not saying there's not some old money that's British influence in Indonesia, you know, Malaysia, Singapore, but it's just, it's going away. Well, let me tell you why. There's so many movies about rich Asians being made. Number one, I have some reasons. Number one is that it's actually not up to Asians. This is not up to Asians to determine how real this is. There is a larger market and systems and machinery at play that can make money off of this. So these are the stories. I know what you're tell. talking about. I know what this you're talking about. This is entertainment. It's not up to the 6% in America. Right, right, right. Because Kevin Kwan, who wrote Crazy Rich Asians, actually was part of this like elite aristocratic, like yeah. British Singaporean world, right? And but the book was primarily sold to white women. Yes, non-Asians want to watch these stories about and, us. And Crazy Rich Asians, despite Asians embracing it and giving it like all these like buying out the theaters and stuff, it never would have got greenlit if it wasn't for blonde white women buying the book to initially. Exactly. So it's I'm just saying the market is beyond us when you're so talking you're about saying the Asians are because, not the market maker. Just because there are Asian faces in a film that doesn't mean even most of the people watching it are Asian. Right. And it had to hit a lot of steps of like non-Asians signing off on it to get made. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So another reason why is there's actually this mysteriousness around rich, super rich Asian people. People don't know what super rich Asian people are like. Like you've seen them maybe in a Bugatti here and there in the city, whatever, but you really don't know their lifestyle. So it leaves it up to entertainment, the writers, and kind of this, your, ima your imagination to kind of build this world around ultra rich Asian people. Because rich white people, I'm not gonna lie, they've kind of been exposed over the years right. and a lot of the connotation is not good. Right. Your Epstein's and your Prince Andrews and very et cetera, et cetera. Weird. Yeah. Yeah, I know what you mean. The the rich Asian world, and there are a lot of them uh in 2022. I'm just saying that I don't even think that's representative of the rich Asian world because most rich Asians are more so probably like one or two generations rich rather than like 10 generations exactly. rich. 
yeah. represented in Crazy Rich Asians. Yeah, and it's interesting because there's actually a, a high number of rich black people in America, but there's no like shows in America about rich black people. Really? There's no like blockbuster well, yeah, shows. Right, right. Fresh Prince tried to show it, but it was so comical. Yeah. But I do believe the new Fresh Prince, and it took a while for the African American uh, entertainment community to get here. They wanted to show all three levels in one piece, right? Because you have your ultra rich old money black people, then you have your middle class HBCUs, and then you got the streets all in one piece Yo, of content. I'll tell you this I wouldn't even be surprised if in a few years there's a show, a Netflix show coming out of Nigeria about rich Nigerians in Nigeria. Right. I could see that happening. Right. Shaw's of Sunset, that was about rich Persians in West LA. Uh, and also, another reason why is like Asian society is still different and Asians still have like this like whole culture and hierarchy that's very old school. And that's why it might feel almost like royalty because they're kind of acting on these old like structures that they're maintaining because it's like Asian culture is still different yeah, than like American yeah, culture. Yeah, I know what they mean. You're saying a lot of old money Asians. It's not stupendous to... to to theorize that they might act a little bit like Prince Harry and Kate yeah. Middleton because our culture is so hierarchical, even though the only hierarchical like Anglos that are still around are actually part of the royal family. Yeah. I mean, like, I like the same pressures you see in the royal family almost just exist in any upper middle class little cat, uh, upper middle class and up Asian Confucian family. Yeah, I think people get uh, forget because in America, this is all like uh, diasporic Asians of like multiple generations. But if you're talking about wealthy families in Asia, you better believe they are very, very, very hierarchical and old school. Yeah. To uh, an extent, I yeah. still don't think it's like the movies, man. It ain't no <laughs> my John right, game. All right, here's my last reason is that it's just, it's real enough. Obviously not all Asians are rich. We understand the income disparity in America amongst Asians uh, and maybe Asians across the world is huge. There's way, way more poor Asians than there are rich Asians. However, it's just like, there is maybe a, you know, we all know that Asians do well in America overall, considering where we come from. Like, you know, the ability to come from poverty to, to upper middle class, yeah. Asians work hard, they rise up. So I guess the whole image of Asians making money kind of just makes sense to people. I just hate that literally any base human stories, like between this and this and this and this, they either have to be wrapped up like in a superstar, like Michelle Yao, with like the craziest directors of all time, literally Russo Brothers might be like 10 out of 10, like yeah. super rare, or they gotta be just, if you don't have those elements, the superstar and the superstar directors, then you just throw $300 million on it and you can get people to pay attention to it. And I just think that the stories are so bland, the way they're acting is so bland, it's just wealth porn. And you know, the funny thing is Crazy Rich Asians, I heard there was actually some like anti-rich tones written into it that never made it into the movie because it was too complicated to be that hyper sarcastic about like class struggle. Mm -hmm. So they just ended up making it just like worshiping visual wealth. And nobody lives like that. Nobody gonna have a stream of water down at the wedding with the floating lily pads. It's all concocted. That's That would be like making the equivalent of like street movies, like glamorizing the hood basically. Right, and I, and I do think it would be like more like rap music. Yeah, right? I mean, I think the other stories are going to come about. I do think maybe this is just a candle that needs to burn itself out. Unfortunately, we are in media during this time when it seems like only the rich stories are getting made, but they're also getting written. And they're also just made with the same Yo, actors. I'm telling they have you. British accents or look kind of like Hoppa or like British. David, this is the rich Asian multiverse. <laughs> you know, this is like, it's all going to like, I And don't then know. we're supposed to sit here as nobody who's anywhere close to that world and a, like the vast majority of people are not close to that world, even the people who watch this movie and act like this is dope. And we're supposed to sit here and go, oh, well, this is the candle we got, so let it burn. It's almost like a candle scent you hate, but you need the light in the room. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? You just need a I, candle to burn, but you're like, God, I hate this I, scent. I think to end off this video, I have a question that I want to ask the viewers. Is like, I think, is there a feeling that all this imagery about super rich Asians actually hurts the life of like lower income Asians? Does it actually put them at more risk? Because I don't know if it makes Asian lives better. Maybe it might inspire the rich Asians to throw more events and be with all the pageantry and stuff, but does it help or hurt lower income Asians? And I don't know, I don't know if there's statistics, but there might be a feeling there. I just can't believe that middle to upper middle class Asians, specifically Chinese ones, look up to that life. 
Like, we know a lot of rich Asians that are not like that. Like, you know, we have rich Asian friends that are more like a Mark Cuban or something like that. But literally, Chill, bro. yeah, why do so many Asians, specifically Chinese, I'll say, but a lot of them, want to idealize this Prince Charles, Kate Middleton, Princess Diana life? That yes. is unbelievable to me. What, you want to bring, like, let's just bring it back to the dynastic days. Who cares, then? What, we are... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, we're in America, but let's just bring it back to uh, uh, feudalism. Why I don't not? know, man. Maybe it's because the culture's so old. Dude, it's going to take a Tim long Fratetta, time to break right, it Andrew, down. Andrew, Tim fratetta has got like $8 million. He's in Texas, and he doesn't even act as like, oh, yeah, and corny as like the whole family, right? And the whole family, they're supposed to be via. They're supposed to know what both sides. That's crazy. I'm not with it. Honestly, guys, like listen, Andrew, to your point. This may be a candle that just needs to burn itself out. The ultra Asians need to have like 20, 30 movies before we can move on. But if I'm just saying, if there's five more years of this with the same cast, same storylines, bland ass characters wrapped up in opulence, I don't want it. I just think when the Asians get super rich, they they want to buy back into the old structures. And man. not only that, it's man, weird. we can't be in any of that stuff. Look at the Netflix piece. How middle class was that? We can't be in any of these movies. I don't fit the look. There's no place for me. Everybody, we're going to wrap it up there. David lets you know how he feels. Um, let us know in the comments down below how you feel. Do you guys enjoy this content? Which there's nothing wrong about enjoying it for What type of content we're talking about? Yeah, Ultra rich, rich Asian Rich content. Asian content. Do you like rich Asian content? Uh, do you enjoy it? And also, what do you think it means for Asians to always have this imagery? Does it does it help or hurt us in the long term? I don't know. It's entertainment. It's tough to to beat some. This is what people want to see from us. So you let me know that in the comments is what down the below. The gatekeepers had to sign off a lot of a lot of paperwork on. All right, everybody. Until next time, we are the Hot Pot Boys, and we out. Peace. Peace.